Hello and welcome along to the latest edition of Greyhound Gold. It's David Short and Brett Honey's back with me after uh, a visit from Royalty the King last week. How do you do, Brett? Hey, <laughs> g'day, Shorty. Going well. Don't know if it was a, uh, a visit from any royalty there, but uh, very keen to get back. It's uh, that time of year for WA Greyhound Racing. We're not too far away from the Perth Cup and Galaxy. We're starting to see all these lead-up races. We're about to talk about one of those, but yeah, really good cards, both Friday night and then a superb 13 card. Anthony Hudson about that on Saturday night. Mm, a big program there and big news uh, of course breaking through the week. Our first three slot holders have been announced for the Sandgroper. Very, very exciting stuff there. You can lock up uh, one of the most exciting sprinters in the land in explicit for Punters HQ. We also know that Tab Touch have got the very talented Morton, the best son of Tommy Shelby in the land right now. Indeed. And news last week from the team at Mintbet that the former West Aussie started its racing here in WA, still owned in WA, Big Energy, will be the third of the initial runners into the Sandgroper. What a trifecta of dogs to kick off. It's unbelievable. Very exciting. Interesting that no WA dogs have been picked up yet, uh, given that the Perth Cup last year, we had really good Eastern Staters come over and it was an all WA final. And then I'm pretty sure it was at the very least an all WA trifecta last year. Got some really good dogs around, so that's been a little bit of a surprise, but you do, if you are wanting to get one from the East, you do want to lock them away quite early, don't you? At least in WA, you, you can you know wait to play your cards a little bit. But that's one of the exciting bits about the Sand Groper, is finding out you know what are the moves behind the scenes to uh, get these dogs, and yep, we're going to have a very, very good Sand Groper here come April on a Thursday night. Five more slots still to announce. We'll keep you posted in the build-up to the big race. Let's go back to last weekend, our run of the week. It was Mandra on Friday, the Mandra distance middle distance challenge final and uh, here it was pretty busy early doors in box number five uh, we saw Ballistic Camp get out going Jamie Keeping in threes there and out wide flying Frida from box number eight uh, not long after it takes over as they head down to the back section Jamie Keeping lands into a nice spot there in second Ballistic Camp there Stevie Minnelli is behind them looking to make uh, a little bit of ground uh, flying Frida though keeps on trucking up front Jamie Keeping comes with a run behind them we see Ballistic Camp and a few of the others starting to work home quite nicely but up front flying Frida just keeps on rolling and is not for the catching really good performance of course it was run down in its heat but not in the final punt as flying Frida prevails to beat uh, the very game Jamie Keeping loves the Mandra 652 excellent record uh, for Jamie Keeping there she was very good for second Ballistic Camp back in third and Savic ran on quite well for fourth position from a fair way back but it's all honours with Flying Frida very very talented type congratulations to Chris Hulse and Justin Warwick she's been one of our gun stayers over the last three or four months Brett and she got the cash there um, it just shows you how much of an advantage it is having that run under your belt from the week before yeah 100% big improvement from the heats but she's been a wonderful campaigner shorty she's still relatively young she's had a couple of near misses in feature finals she had placed in two uh, features uh, previous to the Mandra Middle Distance Challenge. So it's good to see her get a feature race rug there on Friday night. She's tracking really well for the Galaxy. We know that she can run a uh, decent time over 7.15. You think there's a little bit of improvement still there to come, but I like what they've been doing with her. She's been bouncing in between 700 and 600. It's keeping her fresh, and she's a very reliable dog. When she draws off the track, she's got that room to operate. Um, she's very hard to beat. She has been beaten on merit a couple of times, but um, one thing you do know you get from Flying Frida it's effort. Consistency and she runs you the same race more often than not that makes her own luck up on top Hunter's of the speed. Friend. Indeed, let's get down to uh, finding you a winner for this upcoming weekend of chasing. Going to go down to Mandra on Friday night. First of my plays and the best of them. Race nine, number six, Jelly Manelli. Now this Greyhound last week was absolutely stunning. Rolled straight to the front over the 652 metres and ran 37.06. It's very, very similar to what we saw Flying Free to Run taking out the main race on the night. So that measures up really nicely. Goes round here in a race where if it can show something similar early and land anywhere near them off that performance last week, I don't think they'll be holding out Jelly Manelli. So uh, a daughter of Lake Manelli. Cozzy's team's flying at the moment, aren't going they? Well, yeah. 
Yep, and Come of course, uh, progeny of Flake Manelli, who was a very talented bitch herself over these distances, will take a power of beating race nine, number six, Jelly Manelli. Looking for a bit of value earlier on in the card. Very consistent chase of this one as well. Race four, number two, Stang of Fire. Runner up three of its last four starts, and they've all been in good times, and most of them have been eye catching as far as how the dogs hit the line. It's really pelted late in the piece, and you get the feeling that the paw's on the till, and a win at a nice price is just around the corner. Hopefully, it's this Friday night at Mandra. So a race nine, number six, Jelly Manelli, and a race four, number two, Stanger Fire. Looks a nice each way play. Over to you, Brett. Who are you liking? Yeah, I like some of your thinking there, Shorty. My best bet, race seven, number eight, my Nicky boy. Uh, first up, you can trust the Smiths and Kennel first up. They seem to come to the races uh, ready to roll. We've seen that with one of his uh, runners here, honestly, too, in the past. But I really like his map here. On his inside, he's got Sage Tanil, who he knows is not a brilliant beginner. And then it's a bit awkward on the inside here because you've got Westline Odie and Honestly Two, who both want to get up the track. And then you've got No Limit Needed in four, who does like um, to get towards the rail. So I think Meineke Boy, we know he is dynamite over the Mandra 488. Uh, loves running sub 27. If he does that, if he leads and goes somewhere near that, uh, he'll be very, very hard to stop. You'd think maybe only Station Hill, if she got right there, would be the only one that could run him down. So I'm expecting big things from him this Friday night. Race seven, number eight, Meineke Boy. For a bit of value, teaming up with you, Shorty. Race four, number two, Stanger Fire. Huge run the start uh, prior. Panadero Thunder is not a slow dog. No. And she was going just about three uh, to his one in the concluding stages. Uh, I really like the small field because she did uh, he did get a long way back in that particular race and drawn towards the inside here. Does like the rail. I think uh, the dog in one, uh, fearless one, will show a bit of pace. Can slot straight over here, Stanger Fire, and be very, very hard to hold out. Lace rate four, number two, Stanger Fire to go to race seven, number eight, Meineke Boy. Bit of confidence there, Friday night, Shorty. Excellent, like to hear that, Brett. Let's move to Saturday night, Cannington. Of course, we have got the Puppy Classic final. Promises to be a great race, uh, but best bet wise, I'm heading to race eleven, number seven, Sunset Louis. Now. This is a really interesting staying event. Sunset Louis comes in in very good form. It's won two of its last three starts. It's been really charging home late in its races. But this race is a very interesting 700 meter race because most of the dogs are on speed 700 meter types. I love that for Sunset Louis because he's not. And I can just see three or four of these dogs running similar sectionals, potentially chopping at each other a little bit up on top of the speed. That will allow Sunset Louis to just flop over to the fence, which is exactly where this dog needs to be and loves it. Uh, hopefully, sort of down the back, we start to see Feel the dogs up front just running out of petrol tickets after sort of being up there on top of each other for a fair portion of the race. And that's where Sunset Louis gets his chance to pounce, roll by, and run away with victory. I thought he looked really well placed on Saturday night. Race 11, number seven, Sunset Louis. And looking for a bit of value, I'm headed to race eight, number eight, Wise Barra. Now this Greyhound uh, last week went around in a heat of the Puppy Classic and did nothing but bump, bump, bump most of the way uh, with Ghost Emoji. They, it's like they were tangled up and just couldn't get apart from each other and they just kept going at each other. Uh, Wise Barra wanted to get off. Uh, as it turns out, Ghost Emoji, they just they just kept finding each other. It's like they had magnets in each other. This time, Wise Barra draws exactly where it wants to be and that is box number eight here. The old uh, pretty in pink Molly Ringwald, the floss, gets its chance to show early pace get to where it wants to be and I think we can see some sharp improvement and in a pretty open race there's a couple of nice types drawn inside I thought it'd be close to each way so race 11 number seven the best sunset Louis and then a bit of value hopefully race eight number eight wise barra for me on Saturday night yeah really good cars we said Saturday night shorty my best bet I'm going to the puppy classic final race six number four sunset Frazier very, very good last week. Went 29.68 leading all the way. I just think he's the best chance to, uh, to lead the race. I think he's $4 with tab touch. I think he's better than a 3-1 uh, to one chance to uh, lead here. We know that on the arm he goes 29.68. That was um, uh, track record stuff up the back. 18.02 to the middle section. Uh, did get a little bit tired late, but you're allowed to do that when you go 18.02. That's Sunset Spitfire uh, areas where... Um, Cats a thief. Cats a yep. thief. Yeah, held that, trek, that record uh, down the back. So uh, impressive stuff. Stuff. And, and look, there's a lot of fast dogs here, but outside of Ghost Emoji and Sneaky Emoji, I think they all need the lead 
to win. And if uh, Frazier's there going 29.68, uh, yeah, good luck. Cracking addition of the Puppy Classic, but uh, pretty confident there with Sunset Frazier. Uh, for a bit of value, I'm going to one of the three 700-meter uh, events on the program. Race 9, number 2, Hurricane Taylor. I think he's a really good chance to lead here. I think he's going to cross Dusty Deluxe, who's in box 1. Uh, he can. He's one of those that can break 5.60 to that first mark um, over 700. And from there, three starts ago, he went 42.23. Now, Dusty Lux did go well last week, but that was leading. Couch Surfer, Speed Freak, just looked to be out of form at the moment. I thought Hurricane Taylor, with some of the quality that is in this race, thought we would get a nice price about Hurricane Taylor. I think he's going to be on the arm, giving a bit of cheek, and he can certainly win. So race nine, number two, Hurricane Taylor. Let's go to race six, number four, Sunset Frazier. A bit of enthusiasm on the show today, Shorty. I think like uh, we're going to be uh, opening up the wallet this week and having a good crack. Hope you're right, Brett. I certainly do we'll hope see you're right. See what kind of tune we're singing next week. Yeah, well, let's hope we're not singing for our supper and indeed yes, uh, we can, can get uh, a few nice results and help pay for our dinner down there in the Box One restaurant. It is the spot to be if you're looking for a entertainment option on Saturday night. Get your backside, trackside, get in contact with the team at Greyhounds WA. And of course, prior to that, down there at Mandra, Thursday and Friday nights, absolutely firing down there. Full houses and uh, the best thing you can do is book in advance because it gets very busy on a Friday night at Mandra in particular. That's it for us this week. Make sure you're tuned in again this time next week for our latest edition of Greyhound Gold. Gold.